Hello and welcome to the Academy of Dental Resources. I'm Dr. Larry Bybee. Today we're going to discuss xylitol's role in evidence-based dentistry, the medical approach to oral disease. We have been using xylitol in our practice since around November of 2000. My partner and I, Dr. Russ Meisner, were quite disappointed with our ability to prevent dental decay. So we were looking for another alternative to help our patients. Dr. Meisner came to me one day and asked me, what do you know about xylitol? I told him I don't really don't know very much. We had a small 30 second lecture when I was in school back about 25 years ago. And read the newsletter that he handed me and we decided that we needed to try this xylitol thing out because it mentioned that xylitol could reduce dental decay up to 80%. We drove down to Utah, talked to the company that had the gum available and we purchased around $1,200 and happily drove back to Pocatello. What we found out and what we've learned will be presented today in this slide. And we hope that you enjoy our presentation. Thank you. We're gonna to discuss today evidence-based dentistry. So what is evidence-based dentistry? It's simply the treatment required based on the evidence presented by the patient and uncovered by the dentist during the examination. We need now to discuss what xylitol is. For those that aren't familiar with it, xylitol is actually spelled with an X, pronounced with a Z. Let's do some homework, let's review what xylitol is, where it came from, and how it is used in dental practice. Xylitol. What is xylitol? Xylitol is a natural sweetener. It's discovered in the 1890s. There were sugar shortages during World War II that prompted the search for new sweeteners. It's used as a preferred sweetener in diabetic diets in Russia and Germany. The safety has been reviewed by the World Health Organization and the FDA. And when used on a consistent regular basis, the remarkable dental benefits were demonstrated in Finland in the early 1970s. Xylitol, the natural sweetener sugar replacer. It's a treasure of over 100 years in the making. Xylitol was discovered in the 1890s by a French and German scientist, each working separately in their native countries, but made little or no impact at that time. During World War II, sugar was unavailable in many of those countries, and Finland in particular was looking at a xylitol sugar substitute that could be produced from native birchwood. Xylitol was found to be a normal intermediate in human metabolism. Technical properties of xylitol, chemically it's called a polyol. Its regular name is sugar alcohol. It is neither a sugar or an alcohol. It has a glycemic index of seven, and we'll discuss the glycemic index further in this presentation. It's very hydrophilic, which means it loves water. It'll absorb about 40% more of its weight in water. The formula you can see there on the screen, C5H12O5. Relative sweetness equal to sucrose. What makes xylitol so special is its five carbon structure. We'll discuss that again further in the presentation. When looking at the chemical structure there, the white dots are hydrogen, the reds are the oxygen, and the black or the center points are your carbon structures. Most other common dietary carbohydrates are based on the six carbon saccharide structure. Glycemic index. I don't know if any of you have ever taken a glucose tolerance test, but it's pretty wild. You fast for about 10 to 14 hours, and then you swallow 40 grams of glucose, and you'll notice that you'll have a big sugar rush and then a total collapse. The red line demonstrates your glucose response, and the green line demonstrates the xylitol response. As you notice, it's a nice, slow, even entrance into the bloodstream. Here we're going to see the relative sweetness of xylitol versus sucrose, right at 100%. The other four sweeteners that you see up there, maltitol, zorbitol, isomalt, and lactitol, are also classified as polyols or sugar alcohols. Xylitol can keep them smiling. Notice the big smiles on these children's faces. Xylitol decreases dental decay. Fewer cavities, happy smiles from children. Xylitol is non-karyogenic. It doesn't contribute to the caries disease process. It's karyostatic. The caries disease process does not occur in the presence of xylitol. And it's also anti-karyogenic. The caries disease process may be reversed through appropriate exposure to xylitol. 
Xylitol is non-acidogenic and non-caryogenic. Xylitol is essentially non-fermentable and therefore cannot be converted into acids by oral bacteria. Xylitol can be left on teeth overnight and not cause any damage. This all comes from Dr. John Peldiak's book, Xylitol Sweeten Your Smile. For a free electronic copy, you can go to our website, www.academyofdentalresources.com. How safe is xylitol? In the amounts needed to prevent tooth decay, which is less than 15 grams per day, xylitol is safe for everyone. And xylitol, with proper adaptation, can be tolerated with up to 90 grams per day. Xylitol's main side effect, it's very hydrophilic and, it, and can cause some gastric distress. Consider using a small dose to start with and then gradually increasing from there. Inform the patient if they have any problem to cut back for a while and build up to a recommended level. This slide portrays the various studies that have been done throughout the world to prevent dental decay. The Finland Turku study showed greater than 100% decrease in dental cavities. The World Health Organization Hungary study, less than 45%. Montreal, 63% fewer cavities. Yilsevec, Finland, 55% fewer cavities. The Belize study, greater than 100%. And the Estonia study, greater than 61%. Again, this, this slide portrays additional studies that were done. And these are all be available on the website and further review in the other materials that you received with this course. The Turku Total Sugar Replacement Study was questioned as to whether it was really a valid study because it's not really possible to replace all the sugar and they didn't think at the cost of xylitol that it were really accomplishing anything. But it shows here with the total replacement on the DMFS, decayed missing and filled surfaces, that by replacing sugar with xylitol uh, over a 25 month period of time that you, your DMF increased little or not at all. The studies are remarkably consistent in terms of the magnitude of the effect observed as well as the consistent demonstration of the superiority of xylitol compared to xorbitol in decreasing the risk of dental caries. The next couple of slides are studies, again some references, and you can look these up again on our website. This comment was made by Dr. Catherine Hayes, uh, University of Harvard Medical and Dental School. Studies are remarkably consistent in the terms of the magnitude of the effect observed, as well as the consistent demonstration of the superiority of xylitol compared to Zorbitol in decreasing the risk of caries. If you remember, Zorbitol is also a polyol, and you'll find Zorbitol in many candies, toothpastes, and those types of things as a sweetening agent. It does not have the caries reducing effect that xylitol does, and also has an increased gastrointestinal effect. Xylitol is non-caryogenic. Again, it does not contribute to the caries disease process. The Turku sugar studies demonstrated this effect. Basically, the study took two years, was performed at Turku University in Finland to determine the dental impact of xylitol as a complete substitute for other sugars. The method randomly assigned participants to three groups. Group one were to eat foods sweetened with sucrose. Group two, eat food sweetened with fructose, and group three, eat food sweetened with xylitol. This graph shows that xylitol is non-caryogenic. These are the results from that study in Turku. You can see that the DMF increment with sucrose rose from zero to seven, fructose three, increase of three, and xylitol less than one. Findings by Mackinnon in the Turkey Sugar Studies, xylitol was clinically proven to be non-caryogenic. Xylitol is anti-caryogenic. The caries disease process may be reversed through appropriate exposure to xylitol. The highest caries reduction rates were observed in subjects using